Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Dana again. Today is the roads to filling in for Bell. Don't worry, I'm not taking over the Thursday show permanently. Bell has an event this week, and I'm filling in for her. If you haven't ever heard me before, I host the Research Road episode that comes on every Tuesday on this channel. It's kind of a weekly science and tech recap that comes on every week. Yes, my voice is synthetic, but there is a real person behind it. The information is not AI scraped. So today, we will do a little sample of the interstate concept that Bell premiered last Thursday, followed by a couple of cool science items and then some questions from y'all. Okay, so starting off with the state news. Up in Alaska, the U.S. military moved some soldiers to the Aleutian Island chain as a signal to Moscow and Beijing about their increased military exercises in the area. In Arizona, a record-keeping issue is affecting almost 100,000 people. The state requires proof of citizenship in their voter registration process. There is a reported error in collecting the information. Right now, it is unclear what will ultimately happen when it comes to the registrations of those people affected. These are the types of errors that Democrats in Congress are worried about when it comes to that proposed attachment to the continuing resolution. Down in Georgia, reporting from ProPublica has triggered a firestorm of political activity. The reporting covers the death of a mother who had her care delayed over the state's abortion ban. Trump has taken credit for putting these decisions in the hands of the states. Iowa polling has surprised a lot of political observers, including our own here at the channel. It shows Harris closing the gap in the state. Polling has traditionally shown Trump to be up by double digits. Sometimes it has been as high as 18 points. Recent polling shows that lead has been cut down to four points. Even accepting the belief that it is an outlier poll, it's still a warning sign to the Trump campaign. In Louisiana, residents impacted by Hurricane Francine can now apply for disaster assistance from FEMA. If you have internet access, you can go to disasterassistance.gov. If you only have phone access right now, you can call 1-800-621-3362. That number has help available in most languages. In Michigan, Trump held his first post-incident rally. Trump doubled down on divisive rhetoric during the rally. He used the term enemy from within. The former president also said that he believed China would dominate the electric vehicle market and is apparently unaware of how his rhetoric about the transition damages U.S. efforts to build domestic electric vehicle production and compete in the market. North Carolina is now being viewed as a toss-up in the 2024 election. It certainly looks at this point that the deciding factor in who wins the state's 16 electoral votes will be voter turnout. This comes on the heels of the Trump campaign reportedly abandoning serious efforts to win Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Virginia. Also in North Carolina, a state of emergency has been declared in a number of counties in the southeastern part of the state due to flooding. In Ohio, the president of a college in Springfield that had to move to virtual classes because of the threats denounced the falsehoods being spread about the community. Just as a little note, a lot of us on the team have been to Springfield. It really is a great place. Also, in Ohio, the Republican governor was talking about the claims being made and was asked if he thought the threats would stop if Trump and Vance stopped making the false claims. He responded by saying, quote, well, I don't know. I can't predict what would happen, but the statements are wrong. I have said they were wrong. The mayor has said they were wrong. And frankly, they need to stop. Texas, for the last two years, has reportedly been the state with the most Fortune 500 companies. They have now lost that title to California. That bit of news runs contrary to many talking points about the homes of large businesses. Here's some cool extra science news. NASA wants your help with the Artemis project, and there's a chance to get paid. The advert says, quote, Help NASA navigate in and around the lunar south pole by developing a low-tech orienteering device or by creating a method to survey and map the bottom of Shackleton Crater. In other cool science news, researchers have been using an AI chatbot to discuss, debate, and debunk conspiracy theories with people who believe them. 
The conversations reduced belief in the theory and in farther reaching effects, reduced people's beliefs in unrelated conspiracy theories. Obviously, a lot more research is needed, but the results are compelling, considering how many believers in theories that require no evidence seem totally resistant to evidence debunking them. We'll put some links down below if you want more information. Now, moving on to the questions that were sent in. So the question is, quote, Hi, so I'm finally listening to the debate while I'm doing some cleaning around the house. Better late than never. And because of the videos you folks put out, I've been able to see, hear, and yell horse hockey about once every two minutes. Thank you for helping me to learn about stuff and be informed. No problem. And I happen to know that there are still more videos analyzing and fact-checking the debate coming out later this week. One of the things Trump counts on is the news cycle moving on before everything is processed. Bell decided that we were going to space out the fact checks to make sure that doesn't happen this time. Okay, moving on to the next question. As a 68-year young female solo nomad, I'm feeling like I need to hone some basic survival skills. Would you please suggest some starter reading material? The recommendation on the channel has always been starting with the U.S. Army Survival Guide. You can download versions for free online. I've read it, and once you get past everything being written in the context of the military, it's really easy to understand, and the pictures are very helpful. And the next question is... Bell talked about what she called vibes polling and how Harris was trending up in favorability. I know it's too soon to tell if the debate made any difference overall. I'm just wondering if there were significant changes. It seems like it would be noticed first there. So the polling averages we use haven't changed much. They've continued the trends they were on. As far as the vibes polling, Harris crossed over into positive on the 17th. She was about a tenth of a point into positive favorability. There's no way of knowing if that stays there. The trend has been for her to become more and more positive. We'll see if that continues. For comparison, Trump, at the same time, was down 9.9 .9 points into unfavorable territory. Harris was viewed favorably by one-tenth of one point. That creates a pretty significant 10-point difference between the two candidates. Okay, and moving on to this day in history. On this day, in 1778, the Finance Committee presented the first national budget. That was almost 250 years ago. At the current rate, it might take the current group of House Republicans that long to agree to the current budget. And the quote of the day is attributed to Philip K. Dick. Today we live in a society in which spurious realities are manufactured by the media, by governments, by big corporations, by religious groups, political groups. So I ask in my writing, what is real? Because unceasingly we are bombarded with pseudo-realities manufactured by very sophisticated people using very sophisticated electronic mechanisms. I do not distrust their motives. I distrust their power. They have a lot of it. And it is an astonishing power that have created in whole universes, universes of the mind. I ought to know I do the same thing. That looks like everything we have for today. Hopefully you got a little more information, a little more context, and having the right information will make all the difference. Y'all have a good day, and we'll see you on the roads in the future.